Subdomains are URLs for different sections of your website. They use your main domain name and a prefix. For example, if your domain is website.com, a subdomain might be support.website.com. You use your primary domain name and a prefix to denote a separate section of your website. And when we say separate section, we mean that in the most literal sense possible. Subdomains are treated as complete separate entities by search engines. So blog.elegantthemes.com would be seen as a completely different website as elegantthemes.com slash blog. As such, WordPress subdomains are actually separate installations. There are a number of reasons that this could be helpful to you as a site administrator. Before we get any deeper, let's quickly cover how to create a subdomain. We're going to use cPanel because it's pretty ubiquitous across most platforms and web hosts. If you don't run cPanel, you might have to contact your host support or just check documentation. So now that we're here in cPanel, we're just gonna scroll down to the domain section. And here we already have a button for subdomains. If you have any subdomains created, you'll just scroll down and see them on a list right here. For us, we don't have any configured, so we're gonna scroll back up and create one right now. The first field is what we want our subdomain to be. So for this example, I'll just type blog, and then if you have multiple domains, you would have to select it from here. In this situation, we're using the cPanel demo, and so our domain would be cPanel.com. The document root is where all of the files will be located on your server. And again, we don't want this to blend in with our actual website because they are two different sections. So you can choose something simple like the actual subdomain, or if you would like to specify a little bit deeper, you could do so. Once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and just click create. Of course, we're in demo mode, so this isn't actually going to create a subdomain, but just like that, we would now have access to our brand new subdomain. With that covered, now let's talk about when to actually use a subdomain. There are a number of use cases where a subdomain is the perfect option for your site. There are also a number of cases where using a subdomain is not ideal. This includes landing pages, blogs, temporary promotional or static pages. You wouldn't use a subdomain for any of these because they're constituent parts of your website. However, using a subdomain is great for things like a login page. While WordPress defaults to slash WP admin as its login, you can disable that and set it to login.website.com, which is a quick and easy way to prevent some brute force attacks and malicious logins because it simply doesn't show up in searches for your brand. Demo and development sites. You can use a subdomain with WordPress to either create a staging site, a development site, or even a demo site. You sure wouldn't want your standard organic traffic showing up there. If you set up a demo.website.com for a client with an unfinished feature, the last thing you want is for your regular users to find it and tinker with it and get put off. Internal blogs. If you have a company culture of professional development, you might have a professionaldevelopment.website.com that's not meant for your users. External platforms. One of the top reasons to use a subdomain is to separate development from WordPress itself. Let's say you run an e-commerce store on a non-WordPress platform, such as Shopify. That store has nothing to do with the top level domains installation of WordPress, but everything to do with your brand itself. The development team is potentially separate with different bugs and workflows and project timelines. So setting up the Shopify store as a subdirectory could be a little hacky. That's why subdomains work so well. The two are linked by top level domains, but separated as necessary. And regarding SEO, you can always 301 redirect website.com slash store to the store.website.com and keep things flowing smoothly in every direction. And finally, multiple locations or instances of the brand. Okay, here's an example using WordPress.com, which is a WordPress multi-site installation. Each new user is given a subdomain off of WordPress.com, like mattsblog.wordpress.com. In most other ways, they're unrelated. This principle can be applied to many brands. If you run a restaurant or store that has multiple locations, you may not want your Santa Fe store showing up with your Nashville location. 
Plus, there would be no reason for those users and staff to be working off the main site. WordCamp, for example, uses this strategy, splitting different camp organization teams into subdomains with unique sites, SEO, users, and designs. The brand top level domain unites them, but separate websites and teams aren't jumbled together. We hope that this has cleared up some of the confusion about what a subdomain is and when you want to use it. The general rule is that you use a subdomain for specific reasons that need to be, for one reason or another, separate from the main domain. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content. With that said, thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.